When you think of the great French post-impressionist Gauguin, you usually think of these kinds of pictures, don't you? Beautiful views of Tahiti, with beautiful girls having beautiful dreams. In his Tahiti pictures, Gauguin takes us to paradise. He's running away from the real world, looking for something more alluring, more exotic and colourful. But it's easy to forget that when he set off for Tahiti in 1891, Gauguin was already 42. So a big chunk of his career had already happened. And during this big chunk of his career, he'd done marvellous things, painted some haunting pictures of a kind no one had seen before. The vision after the sermon. It's good, isn't it? Painted in 1888 and now hanging in the Scottish National Gallery in Edinburgh, where its colour and its mystery seem to belong to another world. Long before he got to Tahiti, Gauguin was already dreaming of faraway realities. This was painted in Pontaven in Brittany, northern France, and it shows a group of women in traditional Breton costumes praying outside a church. They just heard a sermon from the priest about Jacob wrestling with the angel, and when they come out of the church, that's what they're thinking about. They're not actually watching the wrestling match, they're imagining it. And see this brown bit here, which looks like a path up the middle of the picture, that's actually the trunk of an apple tree that's grown up and which symbolically separates the real world over here from the imaginary one up here. But that's not all that's going on in this haunting and revolutionary picture. There's a lot more to it. And to understand it properly, we need to know who she is, who he is, and what it all has to do with this. As you can see, in Pontaven, where the vision was painted, Strange folk in strange costumes do strange things in a strange part of France. Why did Gauguin fetch up here? pont was what they call an artist's colony. Artists from all over the world came here to paint. Rents were cheap, food was cheap, and everywhere you looked, there were these picturesque Breton subjects. In pont artists didn't have to look far for something to paint. The subjects were everywhere. The story of Jacob wrestling with the angel is actually told in the Bible. On his way home from exile, Jacob, the founder of Israel, meets a stranger by a river and starts wrestling with him. The stranger is an angel, but Jacob doesn't know that. All night long they wrestle, man versus angel, Human weakness versus divine strength. So it's a battle between human desires and angelic ones. 
between the low and the lofty. And it was very popular in sermons. Now I went to a Catholic boarding school, so I heard a lot of sermons. It was generally the most boring bit of the mass, the bit where you started to doze. But occasionally, something profound was said, something that rang a bell. And that is what Gauguin has painted. He wasn't the first to tackle the great wrestling match. Delacroix had already shown him how to do it. Man versus angel, the savage versus the divine. It's a struggle with which Gauguin was already familiar. Because Gauguin went to Tahiti and led a bohemian life, we tend to think of him as being anti-traditional, anti-religious, but he wasn't. Gauguin actually grew up not in France, but in Peru of all places, where his grandfather was nothing less than the last Spanish viceroy of the country, Don Pio de Tristan y Moscoso. Till the age of seven, Gauguin actually lived in the presidential palace in Lima, where he was exposed night and day to the especially fierce religious moods of Latin America. And later, when he became a painter, it always showed. He had a taste for powerful and primitive beliefs. It's one of the reasons he came to Brittany, to be connected with something deeper something more profound. And the Bretons weren't French. They were Celts. They had their own costumes, their own language, and their own mysterious past. Gauguin loved all that. There's a line in one of his letters to his pal Schuffenecker where he writes that the sound he wanted from his Pontaven art was the sound of clogs resounding on granite soil. He was after something primitive, resonant and real. Something that spoke to the past as well as the future. Now, the story of Jacob wrestling with the angel was probably the subject of a sermon here at the church in Pontaven in the summer of 1888. Now, we're not sure that Gauguin heard it, but it's likely that he did, because at this point in his life, he was going to church a lot. Not because he was a good Catholic, but because there were other things in the church that attracted him. Jacob wrestling with the angel is a handy symbol for all sorts of struggles, but it's especially handy as the symbolic encapsulation of a man wrestling with his conscience. By the time he got to Pontaven in 1888, Gauguin had endured many such struggles. He'd been a late arrival at art, working first as a successful stockbroker, who painted in his spare time. He'd married the sparkling and international Meta from Denmark. And they'd had five beautiful children, whom he obviously doted over. 
But when Gauguin decided to give up stockbroking and become an artist, Meta's family branded him a failure and kicked him out. When he got to Pontavén in 1888, his life was at a crossroads, and so was his art. This is the Pension Gloanec, where Gauguin stayed. It was run by a woman called Marie-Jean Gloanec, and on her birthday in 1888, Gauguin gave her a beautiful still life. Some flowers, some fruit, and two lovey-dovey pears. Weirdly, he signed the picture Madeline. Not Gauguin, but Madeline. Because he was already in his 40s when he came to Pontaven, Gauguin was older than the other artists, and they looked up to him as a father figure, a teacher. One of those young artists was an 18-year-old boy wonder called Emile Bernard. Bernard had studied in Paris, the Toulouse-Lautrec and Van Gogh. He was young, progressive, but also very religious. And he wanted to make a modern art that was deep with religious meaning. For Gauguin, all that was very interesting. But the most interesting thing about Bernard was that he had a sister who was very beautiful and whose name was Madeline. Madeline was just 17 vivacious, cute, and even more religious than her brother. As soon as she got to Brittany, she bought herself a traditional Breton costume. And that's how she'd go to mass, dressed as a local woman. Gauguin inevitably fell in love with her. He developed an enormous crush on Madeleine Bernard, but he didn't do anything about it. Not in real life, anyway. Most of what we know about the vision after the sermon is what Emile Bernard tells us in a letter he wrote from Egypt many years later. Bernard tells us that Gauguin was heavily influenced by Japanese prints. The apple tree in the middle was borrowed from Hiroshige. And Jacob and the angel were originally a pair of sumo wrestlers. He also tells us that Gauguin wanted to give the picture to a church. And that he, Gauguin, and another painter called Charles Laval carried it up here and tried to donate it. But the priest turned it down. His congregation, he said, wouldn't understand it. But which church was it? Gauguin tells us in a letter to Van Gogh that it was the church at Pontaven. But in Bernard's version, it was this one here, in Nizon. It's certain that Gauguin knew this church at Nizon because one of his most religious Pontaven pictures, that strange image known as the Green Christ, was inspired by this statue in the cemetery. Jesus on the cross with the three Marys. According to Bernard, the three of them carried Gauguin's picture into the church and found a place for it above the door. Laval, who was very tall, lifted it up, says Bernard, and it fitted perfectly with the primitive wooden saints who were already in here and the grotesque carvings on the beams. The trouble is, none of that actually fits. The door 
is too high to put anything above it. The primitive wooden saints aren't very primitive, and there are no grotesque carvings on the beams. Now, since Gauguin's time, the church has been extensively remodelled, and that's usually given as the explanation for all the differences. But I think this is the wrong church. In between Pontavent and Nizon, there's a beautiful woodland called the Bois d'Amour, the forest of love. Bernard actually painted Madeline here, lying on the ground like a medieval effigy. Madeline in the Bois d'Amour. Now this name, Madeline, is the French version of Magdalene, after Mary Magdalene, the reformed prostitute in the Bible, who became one of Christ's most loyal followers. So it's a name loaded with big implications. Madeline is the archetypal sinner who changed her ways. That's why in Victor Hugo's great novel, Les Miserables, the hero, Jean Valjean, or Hugh Jackman, if you've seen the movie, uses the pseudonym Monsieur Madeleine. Like Mary Magdalene, Monsieur Madeleine is a sinner who's chosen the good path. So what's this got to do with Gauguin? Well, something very specific, actually, because at exactly this time, Gauguin painted a self-portrait, which actually called Les Miserables, and in which he assumes the identity of Jean Valjean, Monsieur Madeleine. The struggle between good and bad, the two sides of Madeleine, was on his mind. Up here, at the end of the Bois d'Amour, about a mile out of Pantaven, there's this moody church, the chapel at Trebalo. There's something primitive about it, isn't there? Something powerful and unusual. And if you think the outside is atmospheric, wait till you see the inside. You come in through this little wooden door and see how low the walls are with all these perfect places to hang the picture. Look up here at the beams carved with medieval grotesques and monsters. And then See all these primitive wooden saints in here, just as Bernard describes. The chapel at Tremalo is actually in the parish of Nizon. That's what it says on this old postcard of it. And we know Gauguin came here because one of his most marvellous Pontaven paintings is the Yellow Christ based on that sculpture up there. So Bernard's memory was wrong, and Gauguin's memory was right. This, and not the church at Nizon, was where he wanted to leave a vision after the sermon. And how perfectly it would have fitted in here.
When you donate something to a church, there's often a plaque or an inscription saying where it came from. That's why on the frame of the vision after the sermon, Gauguin wrote, the gift of Tristan y Moscoso. The little boy who grew up in the president's palace in Peru was showily donating a gift to the church. What else they've got here at the top of the aisle? On the right, that's Mary Magdalene, or as they call her here, Madeleine. And on the left, that's Saint Ledger, the Christian martyr who suffered and died for his beliefs. In Gauguin's time, the statues of Madeleine and Saint Ledger flanked this sculpture here, in which the Holy Mary is being educated by her mother, the education of the Virgin. When Gauguin came here to Mass with Madeline and listened to the sermon, his eyes would have wandered round the church, the yellow Christ, the symbolic beams, and he would have seen Saint Madeline and Saint Ledger flanking the education of the Virgin. One on the right, one on the left. Just like the two figures flanking the wrestlers in the vision after the sermon. That's definitely Gauguin. The hooked nose, the deep-set eyes, it's what you see in all his self-portraits. And he's given himself a monkish hairstyle, a tonsure, just like Saint Ledger in the chapel at Tremalo. And that's Madeline in her Breton costume with her beautiful lips deep in prayer and imagining the struggle between good and bad. To sin or not to sin, that is the question. Just as Les Miserables is about taking the right path or the wrong one, so too is Gauguin's Pontaven masterpiece. And this isn't his only portrayal of Madeleine. He also painted her in a picture which now hangs in Grenoble in which he emphasises her naughty eyes and her luscious lips and makes her out to be something of a temptress, just like Mary Magdalene. So the vision after the sermon is a painting about temptation and desire. She's 17, he's 40. What's the right thing to do? Even the apple tree isn't a coincidence. What did Eve tempt Adam with in the Garden of Eden? An apple from the tree of knowledge. In the Bible, Eve did the wrong thing. But further along in the great teaching text, Mary Magdalene did the right thing. And so too did Jean Valjean in Les Miserables. And so as well did Gauguin in Pontaven in 1888. With the vision after the sermon still wet on his easel, he left Brittany to join his painter buddy Van Gogh in the south of France. Gauguin never saw Madeleine again. And neither of them ever had cause to regret what they did or didn't do. There are a million stories in the world of art. This has been just one of them. <laughs>